Zambo and uh, welcome to <coughs> Dawi Kudin. Tonight uh, I have Dr. Tandindoji as my guest. Dr. Tandindoji is a researcher, a historian and he is currently working with the uh, Institute of Management Studies. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Um, we have been talking about uh, uh, <coughs> training opportunities that people can avail from IMS. We have also been talking about uh, some of your observations uh, regarding the quality of education, history to be taught in English or Zonka. <coughs> so these were some of the issues that we touched upon. But um, let us continue on the training aspects that uh, in Institute of Management Studies is catering. Uh, if you could actually touch upon uh, some of the training opportunities that people can avail from IMS. Not to say that uh, I am here to promote IMS, but <coughs> if people could know, because I have been told that uh, by uh, making people avail these kind of trainings, this is also one of the ways that uh, you could uh, make people look for some gainful employment. <coughs> Thank you so much, Dawa, uh, for inviting me to your program. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, Whatever the views that I am going to share uh, are all my own personal views. I do not uh, carry or represent any institution or any organization. Well, regarding the training that uh, the institute provides, uh, we are very proud to say that uh, the trainings that you provide had been well received by the Buddhist market. And uh, some of the very common ones that you provide are actually like uh, uh, leadership, team building, project cycle management, results based management, office management, financial management. And of course, we also do gross national happiness uh, programs uh, for uh, Buddhists as well as uh, we also are now trying to attract uh, from outside. Because when we talk about training, our the Buddhist uh, mindset is such that we always talk about going outside, yes. the training institution. But as a training institution, since the Buddhist market is very small, we have to look for new ways. And one of the ways that we are actually trying to do is actually trying to market gross national happiness and connect it to leadership and actually uh, uh, better performance in the offices. And we try to sell it. And then now we are really working on that and trying to get uh, people from outside to come to Bhutan and attend uh, trainings uh, given by Buddhist uh, training providers. Do you come across challenges that uh, actually renders <coughs> itself as an obstacle for the institute and the management to organize trainings? Uh, challenges, uh, we face a lot of challenges. First of all, I think there are a lot of uh, bureaucratic uh, processes involved uh, in getting work and this actually re uh, really discourages. And now if you talk about uh, the public tender uh, trainings and the assignments that you get from different organizations. It's all based on quotation. Yes. And when you quote, what actually happens is there are two aspects to it. There's a technical component and the financial component. Now, most of the time, it is uh, the firm which quotes the lowest that will get the work. Well, uh, I think even if you are looking for quality, then you will have to get like Harvard or Oxford university professors. And even if, if Harvard and Oxford University uh, the quote in this kind of thing, I think they will not get the work yes. because they will quote based on the quality of the training that they are going to provide. This is one major issue that actually we will have to look into uh, yes. our procurement manual. I think it why, has to why do you think this is happening? Is it part of the austerity measures that uh, different agencies are following so that uh, they have lesser money to provide and that in a way for IMS and any other institutions might lead to compromise in the quality of training. Uh, what I, I do not, uh, I cannot say definitely, but what I feel is that we have the procurement manual of the 20th century yes. and you are working in the 21st century. Mm. I think there is a mismatch between the two. For the 21st century, we need... Uh, to actually align the procurement manual according to the needs of the 21st century. If you really actually want to build capacity of the people, get the best skills and knowledges into our Buddhists, I think we have to go for quality. 
and then the alternative as I, solution as I have uh, already indicated is trying to review and look into the procurement manual. Yes. So how well are your local trainers trained? Uh, all of us, we, most of the people who are working, the lead trainers who are working at the Institute for Management Studies are trained teachers. We have also been in the education system, teaching at the higher and the tertiary educations like yes. uh, the colleges. We have, some of us have also been teaching outside as visiting faculty. So we are very confident that the capacity that we have, of course we cannot say that we can cater to all the need of the Buddhist market, but to a large extent we can deliver what you can get from outside Bhutan. Yes. Maybe uh, now there should not be any issue if you are training those in-service candidates. But for those <coughs> train, trainees, like the fresh graduates who just joined the job market or who are not even employed, trying to avail any trainees from your institute, is there any way that uh, your institute could assist them or help them after the training that they get uh, employed or they uh, are being assisted by the institute and your faculty to look for some employment? Uh, actually, uh, we uh, have been providing very short-term courses, but uh, last year we had uh, two major programs through the YES, what they call the YES program, the Ministry of Labor and Human Resources program. We had the Early Childhood Care and Development. We recruited 37 uh, class 12 graduates, and uh, we also had through the YES program uh, 31 uh, graduates, and we were actually training them to be teachers. Yes. And uh, the agreement between the Ministry of Labor and uh, Human Resources and the Institute for Management Studies is that at the end of the training, we have to employ all of them. If we are not able to do that, we do not get the professional fee, the input, the professional input uh, of the Institute. Well, unfortunately, what has happened is with the early childhood care and development, we do not have much issues. But with the teacher candidates, unfortunately, what had happened was our we recruited 31 based on a rapid market appraisal. The yes. private schools said that they need teachers. Yes. And the number we came up to was 31. Yes. Because the policy of the Ministry of Education requires that all the teachers teaching in the private schools should be trained. Yes. But the study showed that there are many teachers who are not actually trained in the private yes. sector. Now, when we were uh, towards the end of the t uh, training program, what had actually happened was there was... Uh, the influx of uh, <laughs> so many teachers from the two colleges of education, which the Ministry of Education could not actually employ. This actually affected us. More than that, what had actually happened is, unfortunately, I should say that uh, in Bhutan, we have a sense of territoriality in the sense that we just want to look around and take care of what is in front of you. You don't want to look outside that. So there was a clash between the program called the YES program and the uh, Guaranteed Employment Scheme. There are two programs, YES and the Guaranteed Employment Scheme. YES, through the YES program, they provide skills and knowledge to the unemployed, unemployed youth. But on the other hand, through the Guaranteed Employment Program, the uh, ministries, they give money. Yes. For example, if the Institute for Management Study recruits one graduate, then for two years, uh, this person's uh, salary, about uh, 7,500, is uh, paid, borne by the government. So when we completed our training, the private uh, schools who actually initially said that we need teachers, they have now two options. To recruit skilled teachers to train through the YES program or to go for the financial option. And unfortunately yes. for us, the most of the schools, I think they went for this. And uh, because of that... Uh, of the 31 so years. not all the trained uh, teachers that uh, your institute trained were employed? Fortune of them are still looking for employment and we are trying hard. Meaning you have to forfeit your professional field? Is that so true? this is what will happen because uh, towards the end of the month we have to submit our report. And future trainings of similar kind I will think be it discontinued. will be unwise on the part of the institute to continue similar training because uh, now we know that uh, there is no market for teachers. 
but uh, I do not know how far it is true on what, what kind of calculation was done to actually say that uh, there is uh, excess teacher in the market. Yes. Because if you go to the remote places, there are about uh, 40, 50 uh, students with just uh, two teachers. Whether there's 50, 60 students or 100 uh, students, if you have uh, primary school, there are about five, six subjects. So we need a math teacher, we need a science teacher, we need an English teacher, we need a Zonga teacher. I do not know how two teachers can manage. So these are some of the issues that we have to actually look into if we ra are really talking about uh, quality of education. So did your institute uh, or the management uh, of IMS, uh, did they have any, did you people have any formal uh, conversation or talks with the ministry? Yes, we have conveyed uh, and then we have uh, expressed our concerns and our uh, uh, problems and uh, probably they would uh, look into it, hopefully. Yes. Maybe as an individual, being a researcher and <coughs> also you have always been observant uh, without any political affiliations, just as an individual, what are some of the concerns that uh, today, you, while you observe, you come across as an individual? In our society, uh, uh, you mean about uh, the political Anything. developments? Not just political. Okay, could the be concerns on social issues, okay. the economy. Uh, as a parent, and as a Buddhist citizen, uh, and uh, from my observations, most of the time, the biggest concern for Bhutan, I think, it is the youth unemployment. It seems in the 11 five year plan, the government will have to create about 82,000 jobs. So I think this is a big challenge. Bhutan is a small country with a small population. Probably we have to rethink, we have to reflect deeply, and then look, spend time on probably something must be going wrong somewhere. Yes. We have to look into it and then really debate and then try to look into it. Otherwise, this would because when you talk about the youth unemployment, it is directly connected to social issues, juvenile delinquency, unhappiness amongst the family, social disharmony. So youth unemployment is one big thing that I see that uh, I see uh, as a concern for probably all the Buddhists. Yes. Any comments on the economy? Well. Uh, after the 2013 election, uh, during the time uh, of the election, probably the economy was a little staggered and then uh, slack stage, but now probably it's picking up. However, again, it's connected to youth unemployment. If you really want to actually uh, provide gainful employment to our youth, we have to really boost the private sector and help the private sector. I think at the moment uh, we have not been able to, the government and the related con concerned agencies are trying their best, but still there are some issues. One very simple one, the bureaucratic process as well as some of the interventions from the side of the agencies, government organizations, is actually not helping the private sector to grow. One very simple example is IMS is also conducting training for the guide. Yes. Now there are three uh, organizations, three institutions providing the same kind of training. The problem here is now they are saying that uh, institutions are given quota. You could train four batches, yes. four batches only in a year. And actually the candidates or the students, they come and they pay on their own. Yes. But uh, still because of this one, while there are so many young graduates who would like to avail this kind of training, they are not allowed because IMS can provide only uh, to 160 participants. So this, I think, is a concern. If you are talking about unemployment, we have to first of all give the knowledge and the skills. And after receiving that, then we can talk, probably they would look for the opportunities. In the first stage itself, I think this opportunity is being stop. This is one simple example that uh, I as an individual working in the institute have experienced. So probably there are other sectors experiencing similar uh, kind of issues. So 
when this kind of uh, interventions are there, when this kind of uh, bottlenecks are there, then we cannot perform well. When you can, cannot perform well, probably it also uh, affects on the employment uh, opportunities that the institute could create for our Buddhist uh, youth. Yes. So what do you think can be done? Because it's not good enough to just raise the problems. Yes. Uh, people might even expect solutions as well. And one thing that uh, people keep asking uh, we in media is that uh, we have always been accused of just creating problems and we do not let our interviewees or our guests uh, come up with solutions. So, have you in any way thought of any solution? Uh, to help the private sector, probably I think, uh, uh, of course I do not mean that the private sector should be allowed to do whatever they want to. There should be cert certain rules and regulations. But uh, when the government or when the organizations when they come up with rules and regulations, as far as possible, there should be real and in-depth consultations with the private yes. sector. If you do that, then we also see the views and opinions from the other side of the fence. At the moment, probably there are consultations, but how deeply are the private sector involved? If they are involved, then probably there would be solutions. Of course, uh, things uh, are easier said than done. We could also think about uh, the Minister of Education introducing vocational uh, programs for interested youths. So when they graduate, when they pass out after class 12, if they do not get for a, uh, uh, admitted in the university and the colleges, probably if they had attended a vocational training on customer care, as soon as they graduate, they have a certificate from the school and then probably they could go looking for a job. So similar, this kind of thing. And we also need to actually... Uh, instill the dignity of labor in our youth and then technical and vocational education. Of course, the government is doing, but I think we have to invest more in that. Yes. If, you, if you come up with this kind of strategies, probably invest in those uh, areas, probably then uh, people would go for a blue collar job and not just think about sitting in the office with a uh, computer or a laptop in front. Yes. Uh, Dr. Tandon, the one thing that uh, I want to ask you is, uh, since I already introduced you as a researcher, as a historian, maybe on uh, on the note of being a researcher, uh, have you, on your personal capacity, or maybe even by the institute, conducted any major study or any uh, serious big research done on any national issues? Uh, actually, we had... Uh, all the studies that we conduct are funded by different organizations. And one very good example that I can think of is the, in 2011, before the local government elections, we conducted a study for National Commission for Women and Children. Yes. Uh, it was on women's participation in local government elections. I think the study findings had actually helped the concerned agencies to take necessary policy decisions and come up with uh, intervention uh, programs. And as far as training is concerned now, uh, we are actually trying to add Buddhist flavor to the training. When we talk about management, immediately we are talking about the Western theories and concepts. But now we are trying to add Buddhist and the Buddhist flavor in the management. For one good, very good example that I can actually think of is Eightfold Path, the teachings yes. of the Buddha. Yes. How can you use this for strategic management, strategic planning? What do you mean by uh, uh, mindfulness from the teaching of the Buddha? How can mindfulness be applied in our office space? And how can you enhance performance? So these kind of things we are doing and reflecting on those lines. And we are also doing our management uh, training programs. We actually deliver a few sessions on those lines, make our participants reflect, and they actually appreciate those. Yes. Again, when we talk about customer care, most of us, we, as soon as we talk about customer care, all are actually from the West. But now we are talking about culture-infused customer care. Yes. We, we talk about Lejude, Tatamsi. We talk about the Buddhist culture, tradition, infusing those so that we can uh, uh, deliver contextualized uh, and customized uh, customer uh, services. Yes. Do people, do uh, the trainees really appreciate or do you get... Uh different uh, feedbacks, like in fact, indifferent feedbacks. 
simply to say that uh, you said you are using the Buddhist concept, you are also talking about uh, the traditional Buddhist values like Le Jude and Thadamsi, all this might sound too philosophical in your approach and maybe some of the trainees might feel that okay, the trainer should come to the real world and be practical. Yes, I think <coughs> uh, when you talk about uh, this kind of concepts, uh, we also try to make the participants reflect, yes. experience sharing. We try to give stories, personal stories. And when you, con when you are able to connect with the personal stories, personal reflections, and all these things, they actually realize that, oh, this is a wonderful uh, thing that we have actually never thought of. We get this kind of comments. Yes. So I think uh, uh, we should uh, strive and not just rely on what is outside, but also reflect and use our indigenous knowledge. That's why we have uh, training institutions. That's why we talk about uh, research. If you just borrow whatever others are doing, probably you are not doing justice to our uh, profession. Yes, sir. Uh, one final issue, not an issue, but uh, just uh, out of curiosity, uh, Dr. Dandin, your colleagues, <coughs> some have joined politics, some formed political parties, some contested elections. Why you didn't get this temptation? I'm sure your colleagues, your friends must have put pressure on you, who must have asked you to join parties, must have asked you to contest. How did you manage to overcome this temptation? Uh, actually, to be very honest, <laughs> in 2008, uh, when we were talking about uh, democracy for the first time in Bhutan, as a gift from the Golden Throne, uh, during that time, I actually had uh, resigned and then uh, uh, parts, uh, uh, introduced myself to be a candidate uh, from my Zongkak, uh, as a national council candidate. Yes. But unfortunately that time I was doing PhD and then I had some obligations and then I had to withdraw my resignation. And then after that uh, I thought I need to actually mature because when you are talking about politics, it is not just winning the vote as His Majesty the King has always been saying. It is not uh, thinking just about winning the boat, but what after? Yes. What after? I think that's very important. So we need to actually measure, know, understand, and we also need to see what are the perceptions of the people. I cannot just go and say that uh, I want to be part, uh, join this yes. political party and I want to be a candidate. I so, think we have to look for many perspectives. 2008, you had obligations and you could not, uh, yes. you in fact had to withdraw your candidature. 2013, you thought you were not matured enough. Yes. Then, after that? <laughs> after that, I think uh, we'll leave it uh, uh, on this note because uh, future plans and ambitions uh, will not uh, talk right now. It's yes. too early to yes. preempt anything right yes. now. And, and uh, if you do that, uh, there are so many theories coming up, yes. so many talks will develop and uh, unfortunately it will not give you a good sleep with all yes. sorts of comments coming on social media. Yes. So on this note, I think uh, Doctor will uh, end our program. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, thanks so much. Yes. Yes. So with this, we come to the end of our program. Thank you so much for watching that we couldn't. Until next Wednesday where, we, where I could bring in other guests, it's uh, time to say, Good night and just a little.